Hi everyone. Thanks again for joining us on the real estate investor show, hard money for real estate investors. We are Carolina capital management. We are lenders in the Southeast for real estate investors. If you are interested in borrowing money, go to carolinahardmoney.com and click on the apply now tab. If you're a passive investor interested in passive returns, click on the accredited investor tab. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, hit the bell and sign up with Wednesdays with Wendy. Wendy donates 30 minutes <laughs> per person on Wednesdays to talk about anything real estate. Get on her calendar on our little chat side there on the right hand side or underneath, depending on the platform you're viewing us mm -hmm. from and get on her calendar. She's usually booked out a couple of months in advance. Uh, it's well worth it and yep. it's free. Absolutely. Yeah. Did we say it's free? It's free. <laughs> free. Uh, what? 30 plus years of real estate experience. It's, it's worth it for sure. Well, thank you. I think it is, yes. but I got to tell you, I get a lot more out of it than I give. It's, it's amazing. Just the so people you know, that sign up for it. It's, she started when she was 12. Yes, right? that's right. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Awesome. Well, I'm excited about what we, uh, the topic we have. Today. I know yeah. I, I am too. I am too. And you know, you, you tripped on that crypto stuff for a little while, but you know, uh, our, our, um, guest also has a strong background in real estate, the self storage and mobile home communities and both are which are, are very unusual for most investors. And, and because most, most investors we know are in real estate and they have um, a fear and most fears yeah. are from Unknown. not, not knowing. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's a great, uh, great segment to have Zach come on here and, you know, from the real estate side and how he got over into the crypto and Absolutely. we can talk about all of it. It's, I think it's great. Absolutely. Well, yeah. Uh, Zach is a, uh, Zach Morrow. He's a seasoned real estate and cryptocurrency hedge fund manager uh, is passionate about helping investors confidently uh, invest in alternative assets like blockchain technology and cryptocurrency. Mm -hmm. uh, he's also a uh, uh, Marine veteran. Yay. Five years thank active you, thank duty. You. Thank, thank you, you for your service. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And he is the VP of investor relations with Boron Capital's family of investment funds. Welcome to the show, Zach. Hey, Bill, Wendy, John, so glad to be here. And, um, you know, Wendy, I actually started when I was 12 as well. So me and you <laughs> have that in common. <laughs> It's hard to be such a smart little kid, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, so difficult. <laughs> you know, all of us in the real estate space understand that building wealth over time is uh, creating passive returns through uh, assets, uh, accumulating assets. Mm -hmm. And you can do that with real estate and you can do that with, with crypto uh, and everybody's scared to death. Well, I don't say everybody. There's a lot of people, I'm one old farts like us <laughs> that are uh, afraid of crypto, mainly because most of us don't understand. We're still trying to figure out how to get our yeah. email so addresses kind of, right. Kind of, <laughs> kind of give us an, an overview if you would. Yeah. So just kind of overall disclaimer, um, we still very much love real estate. Absolutely. And, you know, we're a hundred percent in alignment with you, Bill, on the fact that uh, wealth is about asset accumulation and then allowing those assets to continue to work for you. And when we go back, we started 15 years ago. I didn't start the company. I joined it later. Um, but our owner and CEO, Blake Temple, did started back in 2006 in real estate. And over the next few years, you know, started how a lot of us started in real estate, which was in single family homes. And it was about compounding wealth, compounding cash, and then allowing that growth to then allow him to move into more assets. And so, you know, really over the last 15, 16 years as a firm, we continue to ask the question, where can we gain quality assets that we believe we can reliably count on to produce a return for us over the coming years? And so, 
I will tell you that we were not on the crypto train a few years back, right? Like many of you guys and for a variety of reasons. And the number one would be that the infrastructure was not quite there. And for us, we have to be good stewards because as fund managers, we have to ask the question, where can we protect and preserve people's wealth, but then also be able to provide them the growth that they want. And we didn't feel years back that these markets had the opportunity to do that at the time, right? And we weren't alone in that conviction, right? Ray Dalio, the largest hedge fund, hedge fund manager, you know, pretty much in the world, said the same thing back in 2017. He said, it's a bubble. It's surely going to pop in 2021. Ray agrees. He says, I'd rather own Bitcoin than a bond. And, <laughs> you know, so you, you can see the shift happening. The curiosity is continuing to grow. People are asking the question like they see, you know, a lot of action happening here. But when I say action, there's also a lot of volatility, which scares people. You know, is it is it going to last? Is it um, a speculative gamble? Is it a bubble? You know, what really is happening here? And I think that for most people, like you said, it's just a lack of um, understanding. And so, you know, I sat down with a gentleman, you talked about old farts. I talked, sat down with a gentleman, 78 years old, and he's sharp as a whip. This guy is continuing to invest and build businesses. We were having lunch a couple of weeks ago and um, we were sitting down and he, he knows we're in crypto and he continuously tells me, you know, he's got a, an office close by us. And he, every time he sees me, he's like, Zach, I'm, I'm not quite there yet. You know, and I'm <laughs> like, okay, you know, <laughs> everybody's got to come in their own time and, you know, you know, whenever you were introducing me, you said investing confidently. Everybody has to invest with confidence. Don't get into anything before you understand what you're doing, why you're doing it and your conviction behind us. Right. Because then you'd be led to dri be driven by emotion. And we really want to be driven by data. But going back to that lunch, we sat down and finally he just goes, can you just walk me through it? And I'm like, well, let's walk through it a little bit and I'll walk you guys through it as well. And what we talked through was that blockchain technology and bill this is something you shared you know we agree with blockchain technology we just don't get crypto and really crypto is an extension of the technology and when we look at the space as a whole we're looking at a technological space that's coming in and creating a safe reliable verifiable means of communication that undergirds really the internet and provides um, a digital age and digital network to be able to create that verifiable trust and exchange. And so inside this market, when people ask me, well, well, what is it? You know, a lot of people think it's a, it's a currency that's trying to replace the dollar. And I would tell you that, you know, while some people think, you know, nobody's going to replace the dollar and I, I'm in that camp, I don't think that these things are trying to replace the dollar. And that's the number one thing that I think to, to realize it's not just a bunch of currency. It's just been labeled that really you have Bitcoin. That's a financial instrument. And I believe that the rest of them really are more like assets. When I say asset, I mean, you really have a business use. And then, of course, there's a whole portion of it that's just complete baloney. So um, <laughs> that's that's to be known. Right. So a lot of it's not going to work out, but you've got some really strong use cases out there and getting clear on the use cases of how the world progresses digitally. And now I feel like I'm rambling, so I'll let you rein me in and get more specific. But um getting clear on the use cases is step one getting clear on the team like with any investment getting clear on the network right because when we think about the internet the internet created an abundance of different industries and it allowed already existing industry industries to advance and that's really how we look at blockchain technology is it's really creating an infrastructure under which a digital world can operate and then there's going to be a lot of different use cases with a lot of different companies, assets that then operate inside that space to allow industries to advance and then allow industries that already exist to continue to grow. Yeah. How, how does your how does your fund invest in crypto? Can you I know I know you can't really get into a whole lot of detail, but not looking for the secret sauce. Just the, yeah. the, the, the so how do you do that? Yeah. The secret sauce wouldn't hurt. Right. <laughs> So just so that I can be most helpful is the question, how would one purchase an asset or are you more interested in, are you talking about strategy? Yes. <laughs> oh, oh, uh, yes to all of it. Okay. So if you're, if you're investing in a particular coin, for example, mm -hmm. you're, you're talking about uh, really an asset that, you, 
you don't really know what the value is. Okay. When you're in investing in the technology, um, that allows businesses to function. It's a little bit different. So, or, so what or, is your fund or, or is it? Because I think, you know, to build on that, like, what there's a lot of people, including myself, there's a lot of speculation based off of the asset, you know, coin or whatever it is, the value. And then, you know, that's why I don't invest in, in much in the real estate or not the real estate market, but the, uh, you know, crypto. not crypto, Blood stock, stock market. Yeah, <laughs> stock market. Wow. You all are just, you all are just going. Uh, that's why I don't invest in the stock market very much Camping. is because there's a lot of, you know, speculation from my perspective. Mm -hmm. um, and there, there can be. So I yeah. think, how would you, how would you talk to somebody that says, Hey, I see what you're doing, but I just feel like, how do you, how do you quantify an asset's value? Is it really speculation or, or what do you, what's the methodology to quantify that? Yeah. And so, you know, it's a great question. And what I would tell you is when we're processing even a piece of real estate, what's the questions you're asking? Do I believe that this property is going to retain and hopefully appreciate in value over time. I'm looking at its appreciation value. Do I have a good utility or a good use case where I believe that this will predictably continue to drive a need in the market as markets are growing and changing in this current economic season? And then if I'm investing with someone else, I'm going to ask, do I believe that this team has the ability to operate with inside this asset class or to grow this business, right? Because self-storage, we talked about mobile home communities, both areas where we invest, there's a management and a business component to that. So I've got to have a good team. And then I also got to ask about the rate of adoption, right? So this is a new technology. So that's one of the differences, right? Self-storage, we have an idea of how it's growing. We have an idea of a historical track record where what are the use cases, how it's growing, you know, what the adoption rate looks like, what the supply and demand looks like. We're asking those same questions when we're looking at individual projects, because in reality, these are projects, okay? Bitcoin itself is a decentralized ledger, so there's not one organizing body over it, but everything else inside that space is really created with an organized body, and that body or business has a specific, a specific use case. It's looking to bring to the market and then it has a team developing and growing it and then there's a network that then is adopting and using it right so mm -hmm. just like with facebook one of the greatest values with facebook is in its network effect the fact that it has billions of daily users yeah and that's what we're talking about when we talk about network and adoption so how many daily users are inside of it. How many transactions are taking place within inside this blockchain on a daily basis? Who are the people behind it? What are they trying to accomplish? And do we believe that they're going to be able to accomplish this over a period of time? And from the current price, what value do we believe is out there? So there's always a difference between fundamentals and technical. So what we're discussing right now is the fundamentals of that actual asset in particular. So those are what we're evaluating on a fundamental level. And then you also have to evaluate fundamentals on an economic level, right? What's happening globally right now? What's happening politically? What's happening with decisions with money printing? What are the Federal Reserve doing? Where do we believe the movements are going to go over a period of time? And how is that going to impact what's happening here? And then we have, again, technical, which more comes to the price side. So we all know that there's a difference between price and value right? Value is the actual use and the actual tangible utility. And then price is what it's trading for on a given day. So we're trying to create what you'd call alpha is finding good projects that we believe have a ability to appreciate over time that have strong transactions and use case that we believe will be utilizable and continue to have broader adoption and already have good traction. And then of course, like anything, if we feel the variables have changed, we make adjustments. And so that's really why if you go back 15 years within real estate, we're always asking the question of what's been good and what do we believe will be good. And so we've been in single family. We then worked in commercial and commercial. We've had times where we were more focused on cash flow and we had 
you know, more specialty assets like corporate housing or wedding venues. And then we've also done apartments where we believe it has a strong staying power and then has, you know, an appreciable uh, an ability to appreciate over time. And then now our, our focus for assets would be self storage and mobile home communities on the real estate side, because we believe they have the ability to sustain in a market that has a lot of uncertainty. And so we're factoring all those things in, not just on our real estate portfolio, but on this side as well. And so when you, when you zoom way out, we ask very similar questions on the crypto side that we do on the real estate side. Mm -hmm. So, so my, I, all that is, that kind of really cleared it up in a big way for me to look at it from a different angle that I've been looking at it. But my only concern is, you know, in real estate, you've got history to go, go by mm -hmm. you don't have a whole lot of history in crypto or blockchain or any of that. You don't, you just don't have, you, you, you don't have a lot of time that you can go back and, and evaluate where it's going and what it's doing. So how do you, um, how do you hedge against that? Yeah. So when we're processing history, history is great to learn from, and it's great to help assess what could be where we're going. But at the same time, we have to, we also have the information that is today. And then when we're looking into the future, I mean, plain and simple, Everything into the future is a speculation that has variables outside of everyone's control, right. right? We all love real estate because we believe it's real property. They're not making any more of it and people are always going to need it. Right. Okay? That's why we love real estate, right? We're on the same page with that, right? Yeah, right. yeah. absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so, so then that's our historical anchor. And as an investor, when we are as a firm, we're processing this as a total portfolio. Mm -hmm. So we have to anchor our portfolio with a level of that historical certainty. And then on the other side, we're looking at it, what is transitioning in the market? How will it transition? And to what level do we want to participate? And so by no means am I telling people to leave real estate and go into crypto because I still love real estate and we are expanding in real estate. And um, diversity is good. Mm -hmm. And then whenever <laughs> I process new markets, the crypto market actually allows opportunity at tangible asset, even though it's digital, it is a real life verifiable thing that you have the thing, right? It's not, it's not just a number on a ledger. You actually own a piece of that block, right? And mm -hmm. that is verifiable. So I'm, I'm able to actually hold property. If I wanted to, I could take that offline and nobody could touch it. Right. Yeah. yeah. But then I have to look at the appreciation value and potential. And then I ask myself, okay, what portion of capital, time, resource, energy do we want to put into this newer technology? So we've spent the last few years diving in and after the research, we came to the point of believing that this will be something that is here to stay. And if it is here to stay, to what level am I interested in participating? And then with that participation, I'm going to continue to learn and grow. And then my allocation will adjust accordingly. And so that's going to be different for each individual investor. But, you know, Elon Musk basically came out and, you know, Tesla, SpaceX and Elon personally all moved billions of dollars into crypto, you know, over the last couple of years. And he basically came out and he said, I reached a point where I realized I could either watch it happen or I could participate. And you mean, you mean I could watch it happen or force it to happen? Yeah, control it. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, that's a whole nother topic of uh, Elon's tw Twitter, right? It's a uh, like entertainment on, on that. Um, but um, but yeah, with any new technology, the only way something really takes is that people need it and people continue to use it. Right. Same thing with Facebook. Right. Same thing with Amazon. Amazon right. started with books. The Internet started with email. Right. And people are like, you know, well, I'm already writing letters. It's not any more efficient. I don't know how to do this. Well, eventually, the Internet wasn't just email. It was so much more. Right. And that's really where we're at is we're at a place where we know just just on in an individual coin 
millions of transactions are already taking place on a daily basis. This isn't this isn't like we hope it'll happen in the future. It's already happening. Right. And right. So that it's actually the fastest adopted technology in history. And we're only going more digital. And, you know, the blockchain technology, figuring out where and how you want to invest is different than figuring out whether or not you should invest. And gotcha. we've arrived at the place where we absolutely determined we should invest. And then we spent the time on where to invest. And that's that's really where we spend our time as a team is determining where to invest now, because we've already fully committed to the fact that we believe you should invest. Gotcha. Yeah. You know, the question there, too. Oh, uh, let's see. Sharon asked, she said, what about NFTs? It seems ludicrous. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so so we always. With inside of everything, I'll tell you, I thought Beanie Babies were absolutely ludicrous, too. Um, <laughs> And, and, and I'm not advocating for be Beanie Babies or NFTs right now. So <laughs> what people are doing in any given time, there's a lot of ludicrous things that happen. And just because there are ludicrous things that happen doesn't mean that the technology as a whole is ludicrous. OK, right. mm -hmm. so the idea of a non-fungible token, I believe firmly will be something that is regularly utilized, but I'm not talking about an image of a monkey or a cartoon. I'm talking about the technology of non-fungible token. So where people want to go and buy art that they own the art and they want to own a moment in time, and things like that, you know, it's kind of like the idea of like, if I had Michael Jordan's rookie card, is that one going to hold value? Might you, but you might've had held somebody else's rookie card that then disappeared, you know, that's a lot more speculative to me than right. than um, investing in good fundamentals. So, you know, if you want to speculate there, that's that's a different type of investor. And um, that's not where we focus as a fund. We're really looking for better fundamentals rather than, you know, quick flips. So, yeah, the, the blockchain technology is the, you know, from our perspective, the most interesting thing. And I know everyone wants to focus on the cryptocurrency side because it's very polarizing. Uh, but, you know, we, I think we can all agree that our federal wire system and how we transfer and move money through the Fed system is severely antiquated. There has to be a better way to do that. So mm -hmm. are you saying like, you know, I know this blockchain technology can be used for that. You said earlier that you don't think that cryptocurrency is a replacement for the dollar you think that it's going to be something that can advance the dollar into the into the, like the, the the crypto space i suppose or how do you see that so if we want to talk about currency it's going to be different than the markets as a whole so mm -hmm. i'll kind of answer two different pieces here cuz i feel like there's um, probably two different questions answer is yeah answer is, I'm, I'm yeah. a in here so you're the <laughs> we don't yeah. even know the right language <laughs> that's okay and <laughs> Blockchain technology allows for a verifiable ledger to take place without any third party control. OK, mm -hmm. so just for reference, if we looked at Bitcoin, Bitcoin could do what the banking system does. You just don't have a centralized system that's controlling it, but it is 100 mm -hmm. percent verifiable and it verifies against itself. I'm not saying it will replace the system because I don't think it will. There are people out there that would say they prefer it. I'm just not presently. Mm -hmm in that space at the moment. Um, but I do really like Bitcoin. But then on the same time, there's technologies like for us that are in the real estate world, who's ever had issues with title work? I mean, yeah. it can Absolutely. be a cumbersome deal of going back and seeing who transferred it when, and then it's it's all paper trail. Right. With inside blockchain, that that paper trail can happen and be verified on a block that continuously updates itself. So ownership could always be known instantaneously. Transfers of title could take place securely without any needs for you know that wait time or that, that lookup time. And it would be verified right there and then and title work could be transferred right away. So there's a use case right there of how it works. Now, when, when we're talking about it versus the dollar, well, that's, when somebody's building a cryptocurrency, the currency is really the, the way in which the blockchain works with itself. And so when you're investing in, like, say, Ethereum, Ethereum runs what's called smart contracts. So it's a contract system. 
And then it's what's called layer one, meaning it's like a baseline. So then people will build on top of it. So like Apple has a phone that has an iOS system and then people build all their apps on top of it. Right. Well, the iOS <laughs> system doesn't build, you know, we use a, an app, you know, for uh, communication, you know, called Slack. Well, Slack is an app on iOS, but it's not iOS. So Ethereum has its own use case, but then there's a lot of things being built on, on top of it. But with inside the transactions, there's there's coins that exchange. And as it grows, if you're a holder of those coins, you can gain appreciation. There's also things you can do, like for all of us that love cash flow, you can actually utilize it very similar to real estate. Like I own the property. It has an appreciable value. value and then I can actually do things like stake it or um, lend it to, to then create more. I still own the thing, but then I can create more passive income off of it. So for all of our passive income investors, that's an option. And these things aren't revolutionary in the way they operate. That's similar to like what a bank does or what you guys do with your fund, right? Mm -hmm. um, so competing with the dollar, I don't think that that's actually what the vast majority of these things are trying to do. I really don't think any of them are. Um, mm -hmm. Bitcoin itself, I mean, a, a, a potential function would be more like what gold has served in the past as an actual um an actual anchor you could you could denominate in bitcoin but then the currency could still be dollars or you could denominate in something else but you know what the federal reserve does as far as its choices um there's already talks about a us dollar coin and things like that something that i just I'm, I'm not in support of um but um i think that the use of the technology in the currency as far as how it operates is one that you know all governments and um, globally will continue to be uh, utilized very interesting. You've you've made it gel a lot more for me. I'm I'm still not all there in my head, <laughs> but <clears throat> you really have made it gel for me. Thank you. Yeah, and I don't think the central banks are going to give up control anyway. Um, no, but that, that, I 100 percent agree with you. <laughs> no, no, when you're in control, you don't want to give it up. No, you know, the power the retains most power. Pull away. I think for me, you know, is whether or not you like cryptocurrency or even blockchain technology. There is a way to invest smartly because just like you said, you know, as you build users, I mean, the value is built off of the number of users that are coming in. So if you can get in at the right time, um, you know, do your underwriting as you all do so well, get in at the right time, have that appreciation come with the users and then you can get out. You can still utilize this as an asset class to invest in without even, you know, who cares if you think cryptocurrency is the future. It's, it's a way to help you build wealth through uh, diversification. So that yeah. particular fund that you have that deals with the crypto, is that a, a fund for accredited investors? How's that set up? Yes. So as a private fund, I'm sure for those of you not familiar, we have registration under Regulation D, 506C, which means that it is open to accredited investors. That's correct. Awesome. What, I'm going to ask you, what's your minimum on it? Minimum investment. <laughs> 250000 Okay. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I can't let you get out of here without at least talking real estate. Too. Yeah. We, yeah. We yes. don't want to hear about that. Um, what are you guys focused in on? I know you you said uh, cell storage and mobile home parks. What areas of the country are, are you looking at and what, what size uh, facilities? Yeah. Great question. So when we're, kind of looking nationwide. Um, it's not so much that we're singled in on a specific area. We're really looking for value, which I think everybody's doing right now is, is where can we find that long-term value? I will tell you, we're really focused on um, already operational. And then our value add is really more about management and economy of scale. And so, you know, I'll just to give you an example, um, the last three uh, properties we invested into um, one is a 35 and a half acre, 210 unit mobile home community just north of D.C., uh, right on the water in Dundalk, Maryland. Um, another property we invested into um, is in Alexandria, Virginia, which is just south of D.C., right there close to Washington, Reagan, if you're from the area. Um, I, li I lived over there for about five years. And um, that one right there is about 950 units. And wow. then um, we just um, invested into a property a little north of Houston, and um, that one's a little over 600 units. So, 
you know, we're, we're really looking, our, our focus inside these assets is really long term. So we're not coming in just from a value add to look to sell. We're really looking more of a ability to come in, cash flow, um, help really take advantage of the tax benefits and then um, bring value add through the management. And then we come in relatively low leverage, seek to refinance and allow investors to kind of, you know, pull their capital back out and retain ownership. And then we seek to operate that together over time and continue to um, kind of rinse and repeat that model. Sounds to me like the two up north are possibly in resort communities. Is that, does that sound right? Since they're um, on the water? I wouldn't necessarily <laughs> call it a resort community. Um, I think I've that, seen some really nice high end mobile home parks in Florida that would. <laughs> yeah. Well, yes. Uh, you know, that, that, that's different. Um, we do like Florida. And, you know, Bill, kind of to your question, I'll tell you, for me, for the most part, I tell you, you know, Texas kind of running along the sun, sun Belt out to the East Coast, kind of the southern U.S. there. And then kind of up towards the D.C. area has been a more centralized focus. But um, um, we're not just looking there. Um, as far as, you know, the mobile home communities, we really are focused on really strong blue collar, middle America and, um, looking for nice communities, but, um, um, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't personally call them resort, but I, I think they're really nice. You know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> for sure. I, tell you, I, I am shocked that they have that large of a community in Maryland and Alexandria with the value of the land being that high in those areas that somebody hasn't gone in there and uh, just redeveloped th those properties into something else. Well, and, and just to be clear, maybe it's important to note the Maryland property, the 210 units, that's mobile home community. The Alexandria property is self storage. Oh, okay. oh gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Right. yeah. <laughs> and, and, and the Houston property self storage as well. Okay. Gotcha. Nice. Yeah. And before we, before we do let you go, uh, we had a question from Connor. He's asking if there's any books or podcasts that you would suggest for um, beginners. And he's talking about the crypto, crypto yeah. and blockchain. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So um, there's a couple good ones. Um, depends on, I would say um, your level of interest. If you're really just kind of starting to learn, um, we actually have a channel. We go live every Thursday. I'll be, going live actually with our partners every Thursday at 530 um, Eastern and awesome. we do that on our channel. And that's the Boron Capital YouTube channel. Um, that's a great place to get started. Um, and then we provide additional content there. As far as books, the Bitcoin standard is a great one. Um, also, I've um, had the pleasure of getting to know a couple great authors and people inside this space. Robert Breedlove, Jimmy Song, they wrote a book. Um, with a couple other people called Thank God for Bitcoin. It's a very interesting <laughs> read um, that really tracks back. And I'll tell you, you know, um, as a man of faith myself, this is this is one that that really spoke to me. Um, it really talks about the morality of money and it actually really dissects um, our monetary system in a great way. But it's also a very easy read. So I think it's about 150, 200 pages. Um, you'll get a lot of great history about how money operates, how our system operates, and um, how they see Bitcoin fitting into that. So awesome. Um, those, so, those are great places to start. So thank God for Bitcoin and yes. the Bitcoin standard. That's correct. Awesome. And then what is your um, Thursday uh, podcast? podcast? What, what is that again? The yeah, Boron so Capital? A, mm -hmm, we do that on our YouTube channel which is the Boron Capital, B-O-R-O-N Capital. And then you can just find us right there um, and uh, connect with us. And we do that show every Thursday at 5.30 Eastern. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you. Thank you. Thank you. This was great. And I have to tell you, we've had more people live on this show than we've ever had on any show live. <laughs> Well, I, I hope it was because they enjoyed it. <laughs> I'm sure it was. I really think the topic is is so, so everybody wants to understand it. And, and yeah. you know, it's hard to understand. <laughs> it yeah. really is hard to understand. And I think you did a great job um, explaining that for sure. I'm going to have to get you on my faith-based investor group that I do every Friday morning called Sunrisers. I'll reach out oh, to you yeah. about that. <laughs> That's wonderful. It's awesome.
Thanks. Thanks. Thank you so much for, for joining us. Um, Good stuff. We will uh, <clears throat> a, again, reach out later. Um, we do have some other stuff we'd like to discuss with you as well. Um, folks, thank you so much for joining us again on the real estate investor show, hard money for real estate investors. We are Carolina capital management. We're lenders in the Southeast for real estate investors. If you are interested in borrowing money, go to carolinahardmoney.com and click on the apply now tab. <laughs> if you're interested in passive returns, click on the accredited investor tab. If you are uh, crazy, like, crazy, sign up for Wednesdays with Wendy. Yeah. <laughs> and don't forget to <laughs> like, share, subscribe, hit the bell. And again, Wednesdays with Wendy. That's right. Thanks right. guys. Have a wonderful rest of your week. We'll see you next week. Take care.